Welcome, 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 Be Holy, Be Perfect community. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for tuning in. This is a wonderful day to serve the Lord. May you be blessed. May you be made whole in your spirit, mind, and body in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. May the blood of Jesus cover you from the tip of your head to the sole of your feet and that you may receive the power of the living blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We continue to talk about trauma, the system of power, power control will, and specifically we are talk about uh, Eve, confusion, surrender, and abdication, and this is part four. Eve's confusion, her surrender, and her abdica abdication of her authority. A lot of times we look at the word of God and we simply just kind of go through it and not really um, understand or allow the Holy Spirit to provide us revelation as to what he means. We take uh, one aspect of the scripture based on what we have heard and we don't uh, continue to search out the word of God. And so let us search out the word of God today and let's see what's really going on here with Adam and Eve. And we're in Genesis chapter three, verse two. And we may be in Genesis chapter three for quite a couple of days uh, because it's imperative that we understand this. This is basically the foundation of warfare and the pattern of warfare that is waged against the saints. And if we fail to see that pattern, we will always uh, be defeated. And we don't want to be defeated. So we want to be overcomers, overcomers in the name of the Lord. Genesis 3, 2, And the woman said to the servant, We may eat the fruit from the tree of the garden. Genesis 3 and 3, Except the fruit, except the fruit from the tree which is, which is in the middle of the garden. God has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die, lest you die. Genesis Three, four, but the servant said to the woman, you shall not surely die. Now, here is a conversation going on, and here is something that we have to learn. What is happening here is we know that Satan is what? He is the seducer and deceiver. So once he spoke words, once words came forth from him, he rele released seductiveness and what? And deception. And what? It came from his nature. It came from his nature. And at this time, at this, when he opened his mouth, especially when he began to question the truth and validity of God and God's commandments, she should, with her authority, silence him. Because we know that in Genesis chapter 1, verses 27 through 28, that the Lord created man, uh, both male and female, in his likeness and, his, and in his own image. And he gave them rule, authority, and dominion over the earth in the Garden of Eden. So she had dominion over Satan at this time. So she could have silenced him. She could have silenced him and that would have been the end of the story. But because she did not take her authority and uh, silence the enemy, she uh, incurred his nature. Why? Because she surrendered to the voice of her enemy. So she basically abdicated, abdicated her authority over to Satan at this time. And so we uh, want to 
blame Adam for looking that he was not there to uh, secure Eve and protect her, but the Lord say that he gave them both dominion and authority. Genesis 2.16, and the Lord God commanded the man saying, you may freely eat of every tree of the garden, Genesis 2.17, but of the tree of the knowledge of of good and evil and blessing and calamity you shall not eat for in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die genesis 2:23 then adam said this creature is now bone of my bones flesh of my flesh she shall be called woman because she was taken out of me here is a key point Eve came out of Adam and she was his bones, bones. Remember, we get the blood from the bone marrow. He says she is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. So in that, she had the cells, the sinews, the the thinking, the the um the union, they were one flesh. So she had that authority and dominion that Adam had. He ruled uh, over her, but they also were partners in authority. And if we miss this, we will get into this uh, thing of temptation and not uh, blame everything on the devil. But we have to uh, take responsibility here as Eve and maybe she was confused why would this guy in in the garden anyway and there is some confusion because she uh distorts the word of God and when we see here in verse Genesis 2 and 17 here is what God here is what God actually said for in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die now Satan came back and he accused God basically of lying because in Genesis 3 and 4, he said, but the serpent said to the woman, you shall not surely die. Now, listening to this, that is a lie. And what do a lie do? A lie confuses. So once if she did not uh, reject that, she received confusion. She received confusion. And so every time a word is spoken, we must understand it. We must understand it. Every time a word is spoken, there is power released in that word. And at the time that the enemy was speaking and Eve was not rejecting, not uh, silencing it, she was listening and listening what listening brings something to us it brings what it will bring the nature of the speaker and this is what is going on so in order for the enemy to have power over her he released his nature so when we begin to talk about uh the temptation of eve and adam the lust of the flesh the lust of the eye in the pride of life, this is a nature that was released from Satan when she did not take the authority and uh, advocated her authority to Satan by listening to him. Matthew 4, 19, we're going to see the parallel of what Jesus did. Matthew 19, Matthew 4 and 9, and he said uh, to him, him, the devil, these things all taken together, I will give you if you will prostrate yourself before me and do homage and worship me. Matthew 4 and 10, then Jesus said to him, be gone, say, in other words, silence, shut up, get out of my face. Uh, for it has been written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him alone shall you serve. Now, if, if Eve would have said these words, look, uh, I know what the Lord said, get out of my face, be gone and be gone satan be gone and she had that authority to say that and then in matthew 4 and 11 then the devil departed from him and behold angels came and ministered to him so here is the difference here is what we need to do when we get thoughts when we get words that will change our nature that will change the environment that we are in we must say in the name of Jesus, Satan, be gone. 
be gone for it is written for it is written you shall worship the lord your god and him alone shall you serve now when he says in matthew 4 and 9 and he said to him these things all taken together i will give you if you will prostrate yourself before me and do homage and worship me see the silence of eve basically allowed that whole process of that conversation where she didn't resist. If you don't resist, you basically surrender. There is no neutrality in uh, the war with the enemy, with the war with the adversary, because he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So we can't be neutral. We can't be silent when uh, he comes in any form. And when we go on in this, the in Genesis, we will also begin to see when God say, who told you this? And that's a question that we should constantly ask ourselves. Who is speaking to me? When someone comes with gossip, with malice against another person, we need to ask the question, who is saying this? And why are they saying it? Why? Because when we receive that malice speaking, that gossip, what? It releases that spirit, that rebellion in us. So that rebellion where uh, Eve did not resist, she rebelled against God. And this is why the fall came. It was, a, they were in a state of rebellion against God. So this is critical, and we have to see this, and you're going to have to study this, and you're going to have to review the teachings uh, maybe more than once or twice because this is critical in our, our walk with the Lord. We must see the pattern of confusion, surrender, and ab abdication of our authority when it comes to uh, living the life for the Lord, living a life for the Lord, living a holy life for the Lord. Now I say unto you, may you be blessed. May the Lord keep you from stumbling or falling for he is the only true and wise God to God be the dominion and power and authority. And may he continue to rule over our lives and impute holiness, infuse us with holiness through his word and his spirit in the name of Jesus. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Amen. Bless the Lord.